Hello. Okay, I'm gonna wait here for a sec. Uh, but, let me show you what I got. So I wish I had a webcam that I could point at things and I don't. <laughs> but here is this low poly uh, model. Oh, this is the one with a little bit of a hole in it. Where is it? Right there. Um, <clears throat> the other ones, I, I was able to fix that. But this low poly model, I, I'm, I'm going to just glue some plastic in there. But anyway, low poly model, it's hollow. Um, and then on top, this is a smoke plume from a rock. And then on top of that go these guys, these Falcon Heavies. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do today, they stack up on top like this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build a platform for the electronics that go in here. So let me show you the electronics. CNC cut or cut this on a CNC table. Um, this is the base. You can see the outline of the of the smoke plume goes in there. And then here's the electronics package. We've got LEDs, which I want to stand up and more narrow than this, but at kind of an A-frame. And then um, boop. It's an Adafruit trinket and um, a voltage converter. It's called a uh, Stepper or something. Uh, let me see. I, I keep forgetting the name of this thing. Uh, voltage. Voltage level translator. That's what it's called. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, a vol voltage shifter, a, le a level shifter, something like that. Uh, this one is uh, two. Um, what's it called? Two channels. We've got more that are coming. Uh, I'm buying them from Adafruit, and they're going to be four levels. But it doesn't it doesn't really matter. We'll just have three. <laughs> there are three channels that aren't in use, which is fine. <coughs> Because this is going to be hackable in that way, you know. Maybe you can use that later. So, um, the way I'm thinking about designing this is uh, this breadboard is uh, twice as big as the one on the final version is going to be. But uh, it's got these holes here, these mounting holes. Right there. Um, so, what I'm thinking is... Um, a base with screw holes. Uh, I can mount, just screw the base straight into the wood and then have little uh, plastic bits that come up through these holes and hold it still, just like a friction fit. Um, and then I want two arms that come up and grab the LEDs and hold them in place. So we're going to have to do some measuring, uh, but it'll be good. At least I'm not having a uh, design um, amount for the trinket. I've done that in the past and it's a pain in the butt because the mounting holes in the trinket are tiny because it's a tiny little microcontroller. Okay. So we're going to do this in Fusion 360 because it's free. <clears throat> um, so the first thing I want to do is um, figure out what our base is going to look like. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to put it on this plane here. And I have look, off, look at turned off automatically because sometimes it, it really screws you up. So um, I have this half breadboard here. And if I, or, uh, it's Adafruit's Permaproto breadboard thing. So I've got a half. What I've got coming in the mail are quarter-sized. 
And so what I'm going to do is I can only design one of the mounting posts. I can estimate the size. I can only design one of the mounting posts for this guy, and then for the other one, um, I'll do both of them. But on this breadboard, I got calipers. This breadboard is 50.8 millimeters wide. Now we're not going to have to use that exactly. Um, but it's a it's a good place to start. So let's do just a rectangle here. Uh, we'll make this my wide 50. I'll just call it 50 for now. Um, this guy is, oops. eighty one millimeters long. So let's say eighty one. Uh, let's, let's call it half of that because eventually we're going to design for the half sized one. I'll so call it forty millimeters. Um, wow, well, yeah, it'll be taller than it is wide. Okay. And then this guy has a hole. That is 3.5 millimeters in diameter. I want to circle. Uh, 3.5 over 2. Oh, actually, this is a diameter measurement. That's fine. And we don't really care how far it is from the edge. We just care that there are two of them. Um, so I'm not going to make a measurement here. I'm just going to move this guy over, call it... Uh, Four millimeters. That's we're gonna have a post coming up, so it can be right on the edge. If this was a hole, I wouldn't want it too close to the edge. Um, actually, you know what? With that in mind, let's just put this post right on the edge. So I will do a tangent constraint. Um, I'm gonna fix this guy. There we go. We got a tangent constraint. It can go right on there. Um, actually, let's unfix these two. And what we'll do is when we put in the other hole, or the other post, we can just plop it over here, define the distance between the two posts, and then have the box adjust its size, because that base doesn't, we don't care what size it actually is. Um, we'll, we'll drive the base size by that hole. Uh, okay, so this is 3.5. Um, I'm actually gonna bring this down, um, so it'll be a, we'll actually be able to fit it on there. Um, uh, let's say 3.4. Hopefully that's not going to be too big. It, it might be 3. Point, let's call it 3.3. .3. Okay. Uh, and then we want to center that. So I'm going to say symmetry. So we're going to do this guy, this guy, and then the center. Oh. Oh, okay, we can't do symmetry around uh, a circle, so instead what I'll do is I'll make a line, uh, call it a construction line, find the center wherever it is, there it is. So I dropped this really close, but obviously not right on there, so then I'll take the circle and put it on that line. <clears throat> now, I don't need this base to be this big, so I think I can do some cutouts. Um, but let's not do that until we have the screw mounts in there. So, I've got some screws that ought to do it. It's got a nice wide head. Uh, it's not too long, so you know we're not going to go busting through the bottom of this guy. Let me make sure that's the case. Yeah, 
it, it'll go almost all the way through, but not quite all the way through. So I can measure this guy. I don't care what the head size is. Uh, that's 4.2 millimeters. So I can do another circle. 4.2. This one we want to be just about exactly the same size, and that way the threads will bite into it. Because it'll be, the hole will be a little smaller than it should. Just because the 3D printer will ooze a little bit. Okay. Um, and since this is going to be a hole through, we definitely don't want it on the edge. So I'm going to do a dimension. There we go. And let's just call it an even 5 millimeters. Okay. And then uh, similarly, we're going to want this on the center line. So I'll make a center line here. Oop, that needs to be construction, and we'll just say coincident. You gotta click the center point, not the circle. There we go. All right. Um, and then I want another one of these on the other side. So this is already a midpoint. So I can say reflect or mir mirror. Yeah, mirror. Object mirror line. Doink. Okay, so those are going to be our two through holes. Um, then we'll have this guy. Uh, for this one, then later on I'll come in and add that other one, but I don't know what I want that measurement to be yet. Uh, and then we're also going to have to add arms to hold the LEDs. Um, but I think I'm just going to print this whole thing uh, in in one piece have the arms sticking up. Okay, now that I'm thinking about it uh, Oh, okay, I was gonna say I'm, I'm a little bit worried about these screw holes interfering with the arms but uh, uh, it, we'll just glue them on later. <laughs> as long as they're outside of where the uh, the perma proto board is going to be. They'll have to reach around the board. That'll be fine. And I'll just, they'll come straight up. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop the sketch, do a quick extrude. I'm uh, going to leave out those holes. Let's call this uh, three millimeters thick. Ought to be good. Okay, great. And then um, it automatically hides. I'll grab this post again uh, and um, so this is going to have to be tall enough to clear <laughs> that's Ollie this is going to have to be tall enough to clear the um, the headers the header pins on the bottom of the board uh, you see those sticking up there um, so, from the top of the board down to those header pins, it's about nine and a half millimeters. Um, so let's make this uh, 10, oops, 10.5, because we don't care if it is way above it. Um, and then we're going to also have to add the thickness of the board, which was three millimeters. And we'll make a join. And then um, to make this easier to push the board onto, I'm going to add a chamfer. There we go. Alright, so that's our base. Now we need to think about these arms. So, <clears throat> this is going to be a, a tough decision here. Uh, so we're going to need little hands that clamp on here, because we're going to have two arms like this. I think the arm can be straight, 
Um, this stuff is so flexible that we don't need to be really exact, right? We can just put some little hands on there and position it however we want, and this position and space will be just fine. Um, as it is, it sits... The, the way that I had this taped up, right? Because <laughs> I was using tape. Was I had it sitting flush with the bottom. And I really want it up higher inside there. And I think I want it... Uh, tape measure. So I think I want it up in there a little bit. See, I'm gonna just measure this. Yeah, I call that maybe four centimeters away from the base uh, is, is how far up inside there I want it. Yeah, I think four centimeters will be good. There's a, another one of those guys. Um, all right, so let's let's start with the arms and we can put the hands on top of them. So I'm going to make a new sketch in this plane. I want to project this rectangle because that's we're going to have to connect to that and then uh, avoid the breadboard. Maybe I need to make that guy a little taller or a little yeah wider because my breadboard is 51 millimeters. I made this 50 millimeters, um, and if I want these arms to go around it, we might as well make this board a bit bigger. So let's call it 55, that way we'll have plenty of room. Oh, and I made this sketch in the wrong plane. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, let's see. 55. Oh, yeah, I updated the wrong wrong number. That could be 50. Oh, no, I did it right. Okay, I did it right. I did do this one in the wrong plane. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so we'll do it. Um, I could do it on this face, but I actually want it centered on this body, which kind of bugs me that I didn't. Uh, so let's do, uh, you know what, we can build it on this. So there are two ways we could do this. We could build the plane on the face that's facing us, and then just extrude with an offset. Or we could make a new plane. Yeah, let's make a new plane. Plane at angle, do this guy, 90 degrees, done. That's just going to make things tidier. All right. We're going to project this face. Um, we don't need to project anything else in here because we don't really care. So let's turn off that body. And turn off the original sketch. Okay, so uh, these guys can just be a rectangle that's uh, 53 millimeters, right? Because we want it uh, 5 centimeters above the base. And then this width can be just, I mean, maybe like 4 millimeters. And we can make it the same width as the base, that's really fine. Okay, and then we'll put a hand on the outside. And so the hand, here's what I'm thinking. I don't know if you can see this profile here, but we've got this aluminum strip at the bottom with that's copper plated on both sides, but it's aluminum strip. Actually, this whole thing might be 
no, I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. I was gonna say it might be copper. I think they uh, put copper on top of it. But anyway, so it's this strip, and then we've got uh, a resistor, I think, on this side, and nothing on this side. So if our hand is like C-shaped, we can stick it right in there. So that C-shape we want to construct looking from top down at the top of this arm. So we want to uh, build this arm first. Um, and this is so small we don't really care about um, chamfers at the bottom or anything. Um, it's not really going to hold any weight. Three millimeters is probably overkill to be honest. Uh, okay, so we're going to need two, so I will make a center line here, and then mirror, and we'll mirror that rectangle around the center line, done and done. And let's uh, make that guy, at least one of these guys, a construction. We could do all of them, but just so that we're not going to need to deselect it when we're extruding. Okay, so we'll extrude, extrude. Um, since we put this right in the middle of the base, we're going to want to um, extend symmetrically. And let's just do a, a cube. Uh, there we go. Or a, a rectangular prism. There we go. We got two arms. Looks good. Okay, so I said no chamfers, but um, let me let me try this. Uh, fill it actually. Fill it around. Click that corner and that corner, and uh, fill it that, and then fill it to this guy. I mean, it doesn't matter, but it looks nice. Okay, great. Uh, so I I think that's worth keeping. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. It's just for a little stylistic little flair. Um, so let's go ahead and add the other side as well. So we can just edit each of these steps that we did um, on a Mac you hold command to select new edges. There we go. Makes no difference, but it looks nice. Putting these screws in is going to be a little hard. So now actually we do care about the width of this head. So this is 10 millimeters. Um, and we put the center of this guy 5 millimeters away from the side. Oops. Uh, so let's make this 6 just to make sure that we have room. And since we mirrored, that all updates by itself. And we'll definitely have room for that guy. So the installation process is going to be screwing this down and then clipping the Permaproto board in and then clipping the LED in. OK. <clears throat> so now let's uh, make a plane on top of these arms. We'll make a new sketch. Um, oh, actually, let me, let me undo this. Because we don't need to make a plane. When you create a sketch, you can just select a face and it'll automatically do it. Um, we'll project both of these arms. And uh, let's project that center line as well. So, Because we're going to have to do some reflection. Uh, OK. Uh, we'll turn off the body. Turn off that sketch down there. Oh. Didn't get that quite. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So you can see here's our uh, screw holes. Here's the mounting peg for the board. And then here are these two arms. Uh, all right. So the hand is going to have to go on the outside of the arm because. I know I put these arms up five centimeters, but this is actually going to have to like clip.
clip into it. Uh, okay. So let's let's build this. So So this strip is 12 millimeters wide. Um, so let's do a rectangle. Uh, 12 millimeters. And I'll grab this sketch line and this sketch line and say midpoint and they'll snap together. Wow, 12 millimeters versus 3 millimeters really looks big. <laughs> That's okay. I know this 3 millimeters is going to be fine. All right, and then uh, these arms are going to have to be real because, like, this sheet is just 0.03 millimeters. Okay. Uh, well, first, let's say how. So I'm hitting escape, and it's not unselecting the tool when I did rectangle. D for dimension. Uh, we probably want to make this three millimeters thick. Because about, I mean, these are really small parts, but um, well, we can we can probably go down to go down to two. When we're three D printing things this small, it just really gonna be squeaking by. Okay, so now I'll build another rectangle. That's on the outside because right this is 12 millimeters to match this, um, so we can make this two millimeters thick, and this this really doesn't have to be much at all. So it's got to be two millimeters plus let's say another half. <clears throat> so that half is the gap that this is going to slide into here like this you know in so if we if we make it three millimeters there's no way we're ever going to be able to fit this or 0.3 millimeters 3d printed this is not going to fit in there And the ends of these guys aren't super clean. I, I cut them with a knife. So I don't know if you can see this, but the ends are a little crimped. So here's what I'm thinking. If this was a perfect piece of material, all we'd have to do is make that gap 0.3 millimeters and then, uh, and then do an arm across the front however wide and it would just slip in there and it'd be a nice friction fit. That's impossible. Instead, what we might do is oversize it. Um, it'll still probably fit, <clears throat> just because um, that's, that's the way 3D printing works. It, it'll uh, it'll fit. Um, and then, uh, oh, I know, our crimping power needs to be on the, the edges here. So we'll make this gap a little oversized, then keep the width this way exactly 12 millimeters and we'll grab it by the sides and then we'll have fingers on the outside to complete that C um, we'll have those fingers there but that's mostly just gonna keep it from falling out yes okay this is good <sighs> right So the narrow side is going to be on that side. So the amount of room I have, it's like three millimeters. OK, cool. So what I'm looking at is just the, the components here are going to mean that one arm is going to be shorter than the other. One finger is going to be shorter than the other. Uh, OK, so this needs to be like two by five. Um, uh, 
Uh, I guess I, I could mirror that if I built a center line, but it's just as easy to say uh, 2.5. Actually, I'll do this. Let's just build this. And then we'll um, do this here so that if we have to come and change this gap, we can. Uh, and let's just uh, just steal that measurement. So if we have to steal things, we can. All right. Now over here, oops. So if we've got three millimeters on the side without the resistor, we have got a millimeter. So this is going to be just a little tiny. Uh, so that's two point. Uh, I think I said my my measurement was point three, but who knows if that's accurate? Oh oh, I came up with almost a millimeter. So let's call this uh, two point like seven. Uh, and then uh, this guy will just make collinear. All right, so there's our arm. Now there's there's our hand. All right, so turn our bodies back on. So now we'll extrude this down. And we'll say uh, uh, down by three millimeters, because we don't want this to be uh, so thick that it's hard to work with. Okay, great. Now when we're 3D printing this, of course, we're going to be printing it from the bottom up. So we're going to need a chamfer here. Uh... Yeah. Uh, what is it? 6.5. There we go. Okay. And then this is going to be a mess. Uh, so this this is not going to print. Like it'll, it'll fail up to about here before. Actually, it'll fail to about here. This this overhang here. So what we can do is just make this all solid. Um, so we'll make a new sketch. Do it on this face. Say project that. Okay. And I'll turn this body off. Um, and then we'll do a line across here. And a line across here. Turn the body back on. Grab that. it out to there and we'll say join okay so now we got the slot that we can fit this into we'll probably have one LED in there the only problem with this uh, blocked off bottom design is that um, it's going to result in uh, no flexibility right we'll be able to put that in there and there's going to be no adjustment. So we may have to reprint this uh, once we find out if this works or not. Um, and then we got another flat face here, um, which, you know, this overhang, which won't print well, so we can, uh, let's see, two, five, oh, weird, uh, three, four, at, at this size, even if there is an overhang there, it's not going to matter. So there's our head. This is all 3D printable. Um, we can see that there's a little... This, this wall is going to be super thin, but that's totally fine. We're okay with that. Um, if this needed some flexibility, I think we could drop... Uh, or cut, cut this deeper down, but I think it's going to be fine. 
I think it's fine. That looks super awkward, given how <laughs> small those arms are. But that's okay. Um, and then we can uh, mirror. Uh, we'll do uh, features. Do I, oh, first I'm gonna need to build a plane in here first. Um, so I'll turn on this sketch, construct a plane at an angle, say 90 degrees. Okay. Okay. Mirror, and we'll do features. And we'll do you and you. And you, and you, and you. Right, because everything after this change. Oh, no, we don't want that guy. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. All right, and we're playing that guy. And that does look good. All right, there we go. Look at that. It's been what? Like a half hour? Yeah, 35 minutes. <laughs> we're done. Okay, so now we're going to have to test this. We could test the whole thing, and that'd be fine. But <clears throat> instead, what we can do is just test this guy up here. Uh, well, you know what? Let's let's test the whole thing because it's not going to take that long to print. That will we be able to, that way we'll be able to validate the post and the holes that we made. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Look at that. So this type of design is so fun because I wasn't exactly sure what these arms were going to look like. I knew I was going to need to do like this C finger kind of guy. All right, save it as STL. All right, and all right. So now let's do um, uh, actually, I can just pull it up. Um, Slick 3R. And I'll pull that into uh, into OBS. And we will change over to slice your window. Ta-da! Alright. Okay. So this, this is kind of the boring part. Didn't save it. <laughs> All right. I was like, yeah, it's not in. The, it's not in the file list. Okay. And does it show my file? No, it doesn't. All right. I. Am organized. I just can never find anything. It did not export the STL. Save. Okay. Uh. Hmm. It is not saving my STL file. Why is that? 
Maybe because I had bodies hidden? That seems silly. Riveting television. There we go. Okay. All right. So we'll import that here. Boy, that looks silly. All right. And I'll just slice it with my default um, default settings. And it's always good, no matter how confident you are, it's always good to look at the layers. So no overhangs. And then we do have this slight overhang down here. Oh, you know what? One thing I was thinking is this base is huge. We don't need this base to be this big. We can uh, really make this a quicker print by chamfering each of these corners. You could totally do something prettier. Um, you know, make it a little curvier, swooshy. Um, so the reason I'm going to leave all this on this side exposed is because eventually we're going to add another pin. So, uh, but look at that. Uh, cut out some there. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to take a chunk out of the middle as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we don't need to overcomplicate this. It's not worth the plastic. All right, so I'm just going to re-export this. Oh, I forgot to switch over to Fusion 360, so now you get to see what I just did. I'm going to reload from disk. So I just... Uh, added chamfers. Uh, so when I was talking about the middle, I was thinking about taking some out of here. Um, we're eventually going to have a second pin over here, so I'm not just going to cut this whole side off. It, honestly, it kind of looks like uh, the wings on a uh, spaceship too. Okay, looks good. So, I'll export the G code. Let me get my 3D printer heated up. So uh, once that's done, let me check this guy. So check this out. I hate the way that OS X handles external devices. Ejecting them is so tedious. And it's like Windows now lets you just pull them out. I don't know if they just decided that it was okay to have some corrupted data or something. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but here's the Prusa. Um, and check out, check out this piece. So I'm saving this to fill those holes that you saw earlier. Um, I'm just gonna snip out a little bit and glue it in there. It'll be the same color. I, th I think it'll be okay. Is a failed print for this beast. Uh, so this is the bottom of another lamp, a um, um, next generation warp core, uh, and this is this is for a museum. Uh, yeah, it's it's so cool to me that I can just download files off the internet and print them. I, I'm never gonna get over that. Okay.
Okay, so my makerspace has got a Prusa. And all of the users put blue packaging tape, or a, a blue painter's tape on the print bed. And it drives me fucking nuts because this bed is the best bed you could ever ask for. Um, it, it's, it's such a great bed and they put tape on top of it. The reason they put tape on top of it is because things stop sticking to it. The reason that things stop sticking to it is because they're not wiping it down with isopropyl. Every print, if you've got these nice PEI beds, wipe it down with isopropyl. I believe what's happening is um, the bed or the uh, the print leaves, you know, atomic layers of PLA, and eventually um, you get it gets coated, and you need to pull all that PLA off. I don't know. PLA sticks to PLA pretty well, so maybe that's maybe that's not the case. But anyway, uh, wipe it down with isopropyl every time, and then every once in a while use um, uh, acetone. Uh, about once a week, when it's it's it'll stop sticking. You have a failed print, and then you go, okay, time for acetone. That's what this big sheet is. <laughs> Getting the entire bed to be very sticky is difficult, so I had to wipe it down a couple of times. Uh, but. There's a glob there. Let's see what happens. That glob is just on the uh, the perimeter line, the uh, the skirt, I think. So as long as it doesn't catch on the nozzle, it'll be okay. That's why you print the skirt or the yeah skirt brim. I don't remember which one it is. But it's there so that you uh, can prime everything up and get everything nice and clean. All right, well, in any event, uh, that is the print started. This is going to take an hour to finish printing. And then hopefully I won't have to print another one because <laughs> hopefully this design will work. Oh, you know what? It's not going to work. I just realized it's not going to work because... I forgot to... Include room for wires to get printed. Okay, so we're gonna let that go because it's like 10 cents worth of plastic. We'll be able to validate the uh, sizing on everything. So OBS is fantastic. Only problem is that when you do a window capture, it has to be on the same desktop, or otherwise it won't be able to find it. Okay. Right. Let's make sure this is actually working on the other desktop. <gasps> Has it been black the entire time? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's good. All right. Uh, okay. So, these wires. These wires. Everything would be fine. 
if we didn't have to worry about that overhang. Oh, you know what? I I betcha. I'll bet. But if I solder carefully, God, this is a horrible solder job. I, I have lead-free solder in my home because I'm an idiot. So the power lines, I don't need to worry about. I can put the power lines wherever. Um, currently, I have them soldered onto the end here. Um, there are the three pads. Currently, I have them soldered onto the end. They can be soldered on the bottom side in the middle if I need, right? Doesn't matter. All I need is... Uh, oh, did I just hear something fail? No, it's okay. Just that little glob was a little squeaky. Let me pause this. Here's the cool thing about a Prusa. Is this little glob on the perimeter was causing issues? So the Prusa, you can pause it, pull off the junk, and resume the print. <laughs> I love it. The uh, cheaper um, printer bought metal simples is what we have at the Makerspace. Uh, they are what I cut my teeth on 3D printing and uh, you can't pause them. And so if you have something go wrong, if you can't reach in there and get it without you know screwing up the, uh, the print head, you're toast. So anyway, all we need to do is worry about that middle pad, and we only need to worry about that middle pad on one of these guys. Um, but in, in any event, oops, betcha, betcha we can chamfer this down. So that creates an overhang real quick. What I want is just a chamfer right in the middle. So what I'm going to do is uh, do a new sketch. Um, we're going to use the plane that we invented before that's in the middle here. Okay. I could also tie this to the sketch that I used to make those posts, but um, not great. Uh, so let me, this is a, a good example of something. So if I do project and tell it to project this whole thing. We're going to wind up with something as wide as that. What I want, uh, oh, actually, let me do this better. If I project the body, I'll get that whole thing there, which ain't great. What I want is the intersect. I'm going to choose the body. So now that just intersects with this plane. And so we see this cutaway. OK, great. Um, so now what I can do is just add a line here. And then we'll extrude that. OK. Let's turn the body back on. Turn the body back on and do symmetric. We can pull this out and it'll cut. Look at that. Wire clearance. Only need it on one side and I believe it is this side. No, it's on, it's on the other side. Uh, just because the way that I have my breadboard made up. Oh, uh, nope, that's the right side. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, if I had this backwards on my head, does that mean that these fingers are the wrong way around? I don't think so. I think I've got r rotational symmetry on my side. Yeah. Nope, I don't. I got those the wrong way around. So if the wires are on the or if the uh, 
mounting post is on the right, the wide side faces the mounting post. Okay. Easy enough to fix. So we can just step back to the point that we made that sketch. There we go. Right, so five and two point seven. And we actually didn't need to walk back through the history, but it's good to make this point that since this is all parametric, I can change that and now every step was based on this kind of progressive movement. Um, and so we wind up with the right thing. There we go. I could actually have sliced this all the way down, couldn't I have? Actually, I like that better. Uh, okay. And is it going to do it? Uh, oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it, it grabbed the wrong segment of the sketch. That's okay. There we go. There, look. It's tidy. It's neat. There are no overhangs. Provide support. Should just lock in just fine. So that's great. Um, let's save this. And then, like, if you wanted to be real tiny, you could probably chamfer that corner to make the top look better, but it's it's fine. Okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we made and revised our design. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, let this test one go ahead and print, and then we'll print this new one. I, I could stop it. Let's stop it. Because th this is all we have. Oh, that's that's all we have so far. So we can we can get rid of that. That's okay. All right, so I will uh, post photos. I'll see if I can remember to update the YouTube page. Uh, but yeah, I'll post photos on Twitter, uh, Ben Etherington, not the uh, podcast Twitter. But there you go. Some quick 3D design. It's really easy. Like, I'm an idiot, and I can do this. I've designed maybe 30 things, and I can whip this thing out. All right.